I'm Ruben Puentadura. I'm an independent education researcher. And uh, a large part of my work focuses on the uses of technology in education. And this goes back to the mid 80s. And at that point in time, I found that people were saying, oh, you know what, we've got this great uh, piece of software. That just use this and your students will do amazingly. And what I found was it didn't seem to be about the, the particular piece of software or hardware, but more a question of how that piece of software or hardware was being used. And of course, one of the questions then that came to my mind was to say, well, OK, what makes a difference in how technology is used in education. So I worked on this topic for about mm, a decade or so. And what I found was that what mattered wasn't just the specific uh, piece of software or hardware, but also how teaching practice changed in the context of using this tool. So I found what you actually had was almost two strands. You know, one strand, which was you have a technology. It's a new technology. It typically will replace or augment an existing technology and will have new features that the older technology didn't have. Some type of affordance, something it can do a little bit better, a little bit more effectively, a little bit more efficiently, some feature that was not available with the older technology. And that's one strand. But that's not the only strand. The other strand is how does teaching practice change when something in a teacher's environment changes? So do they do pretty much the same thing they were doing before? Do they improve it somehow? Or do they start to say, well, hold on, what's at the heart of what I was doing? And how do I then keep the heart, but maybe change dramatically some things around it, or just come up with new ideas altogether? And when you take those two strands and you bring them together, you now have a picture that really does explain how uh, different uses of technology have different impacts upon learning and upon teaching. And the result of that is what I developed, which is called the SAMR model. Now, SAMR is an acronym for Substitution, Augmentation, Modification, Redefinition, which are the different levels or types of use. So you start all the way with, down with substitution, in where, where what you're doing is you're saying, I'm using a new technology to do what an older technology was doing in exactly the same way. Then at augmentation, you say, how do I make it a little bit better, improve it a little bit? At modification, you start to say, well, I'm going to keep the heart of what I was doing the same, but now I'm going to do something completely different around it to achieve the same goals I was achieving before, but in better ways or uh, more effective ways. And finally, at redefinition, I'm saying, you know what, this new technology is, has some features that allow me to achieve new goals I couldn't achieve before, and I'm going to be using it in those new ways to achieve those new goals. So that, that's the idea behind the model. And there's you know, different ways of looking at it. So you can say, for instance, well, start with something as simple as an ebook reader. If all you're doing is just reading books, uh, you're working at substitution. But if you're taking, say, the highlights you made in that ebook and aggregating them or using them in different ways, now you're enhancing what you could do before your documentation and then build out upon that to have students engage, say, in social writing based upon what they got from the books and you're at modification, and finally have them create uh, new storytelling forms uh, based upon, for instance, interactive fiction, which is more game-like in its nature, and you're at the redefinition level in terms of what they can make. So that's just one example, but ultimately, I do always keep coming back to saying, fine, that's how you get things that really make a change in what we're doing in education. But the other question, of course, that to me is important is to think about why. Why are we doing this? What does it mean to make a change? And frankly, for me, it's not a question about memorizing a few more things or you know, it being a little bit more effective at recalling the same old content that the students were learning from before. It's about giving students options for agency, options that say, well, how is how they're using the technology giving, giving them greater control over what they choose to learn? How they think about it? What questions they might ask about it? What they might create based upon it? In other words, make them really truly the owners of their learning, the ones that decide 
how to shape it. So when I look now at schools, teachers, students that use SAMR to help guide how they use technology in education, this is perhaps the outcome that I'm happiest to see, to see students that really are no longer in a position of just saying, well, I learned what I'm told to learn and I pretty much just memorize and repeat, but actually uh, students and teachers that jointly say, no, we can use the technology to create new things, think about new things, and to think about how things are going to be at some point in the future that we can't predict, but at least if we use the technology in this way, we can help figure out how we might learn about these things yet to come in ways that allow us to better understand them and better create new things using them. <laughs>